So we now know that there are two ways that a company can raise capital. It can do it by borrowing money, which is debt, or by selling shares of itself, or essentially allowing other people to become partial owners of it, and that is equity. And these directly translate into securities that you're probably familiar with, but maybe you didn't have a, a more exact idea of what they are. You know what equity securities are. And just so you know, what, what is a security? A security is essentially something that can be bought and sold that has some type of uh, claim on something or some type of economic value. So a security in the equity world is a stock, and a security in the debt world is a bond. Let me explain this. Let me just draw the balance sheet for a for the fictional company. It was pointed out to me that Socks.com actually is not a fictional company, that someone is indeed selling socks online. So, which I, by the way, think is a great idea. So let's see, let's see, I have a, my, my assets right here. These are the assets of the company, but that's not what we're worried about right now. Assets, and let me draw the equity of the company. Right, this is maybe shares that they sold. and So let's say that they have, I don't know, that there are 10 million shares. 10 million shares. And then we have the debt. The debt of the company, or the liabilities. There are other liabilities other than debt, per se, but that's all we'll worry about right now. This is the debt. I'll do it in brown. We have the debt. The debt. And maybe the assets, let me just think of a good round number. The assets are $10 million in assets. And let's say our debt is, I don't know, $6 million. And then what's left over for the equity, right? And the way you have to view it is okay, if I have $10 million and I owe people $6 million, what's left for the owners of the company? Well, the owners of the company will have $4 million left. $4 million left. And it'll be split amongst the owners. Of, of the company, and there's 10 million individual shares. So if, if every, every person who has one of those stock certificates will own one ten millionth of this $4 million, or essentially, what is it, 40 cents a share or something. So anyway, this is, and I think you're familiar with this already, this is essentially stock. right? When we say 10 million shares, that's 10 million shares of stock. I could just draw a bunch of, I could draw 10 million stock certificates. And you know, it's, I guess we'll, you know, whatever the ticker symbol is. And there could be 10 million of those. Now, debt is interesting. There's a lot of ways you can raise debt. And actually, there's a lot of ways you could raise equity. It actually doesn't have to be with selling. Well, for the most part, you are selling stock. Um, you could maybe think of some other way. And we'll talk about other forms of equity, preferred stock, and all of that. But in the simplest level, you're really always selling stock. Debt's a little different. Debt could be just in the form of a bank loan. So you know, this could be a, a bank loan. Where you literally go to the bank and say, "Hey, I need six million dollars," and they say, "Okay, here you go, and we'll give it to you for this interest." And you have to pay back the money above and beyond the interest over this time schedule, so you know not too different than maybe a mortgage. Or they might say, "Okay, you pay the interest for five years, and at the end of the five years, you have to pay. You also have to pay the principal amount, so you have to pay the whole six million dollars. So you maybe have to come up with a new loan or something like that. So that would just be a bank loan. There's other things that are revolving lines of credit, which is kind of like a a, a company's uh, like a, I guess a company's credit card to some degree that it doesn't have to use it, but if it does, that's kind of debt the company takes on. But kind of the the one that people always talk about, I guess in the same phrase, is bonds. So bonds are essentially you you are borrowing from the public markets again. You're borrowing from a bunch of people. So what you do is you have these six million, let's say the six million dollars, and it could be divided into. What we let me think of a good note. You could you could divide this into six thousand bond certificates, right? So this could be, this could be six thousand bond certificates. Let's see, in six million divided six thousand, right? That's a thousand, right? So it could be six thousand times one thousand dollar bond certificates, bond certificates, certificates, and let's let's visualize what a bond certificate could look like. So that could be a bond certificate and its face value and sometimes they'll call it the par value or the stated value it'll say you know let's call it bond from company XYZ and it is its face value is $1000 so it's essentially this is an IOU from company XYZ if i were to hold one of these 
if I had one of these sitting on my desk right now, that tells me that company XYZ is going to pay me $1,000 at some future date. right? And that future date is at maturity. So it's going to pay $1,000 $1, at maturity. maturity. And you say, oh, well, Sal, you know, that's, that's all good, but what about the interest in between? And there's two ways to think about this. Maybe, maybe they're going to pay me $1,000 in the future, but I only have to give them $500, right? So if you think about it, there's automatically interest accruing in that, right? If I gave them $500, and then five years later they pay me $1,000, they're essentially paying interest, right? They're paying me more back than I gave to them. And we'll, in future videos, we'll actually do the math of how to figure out that type of interest. And in that situation where they're not kind of paying me interest as they go, this would, kind of, this would be viewed as a zero coupon bond. And I know I'm throwing out a lot of terminology, but it'll all make sense to you in a second. So zero coupon essentially means they're not paying interest until they pay off the whole loan. And then they might kind of, the, the interest will be implicit in the whole value of the amount. And I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. But coupon is essentially a regular payment on the bond that the company makes, in this case XYZ will make, that is essentially, you can almost view it as a kind of interest. But if you really had to figure out the interest that you're getting on the bond, you would actually have to figure out, and I'll do, a whole, I'll do maybe a whole playlist on bond mathematics. You would have to figure out, you, it's based on the coupon, what you gave them, and then what they're going to pay you and when they're going to do it. So it's a little bit more complicated than just saying, oh, look at that, they're giving a, a 6% coupon, which is meant essentially means you know twice a year they're going to give me 3% of the value of my bond. So just a big picture, I mean, both of these things are traded. Both of, you know, this is a stock. It's traded on exchange. And you've, you're probably familiar with that. If you go to Yahoo Finance, you, get, you type in the ticker symbol, and you get the price for that day. Bonds are also traded. Unfortunately, it's not as easy to get a quote on a bond. Usually, you usually have to have a Bloomberg terminal of some type. You, it's, you can't get it on Yahoo Finance. And I, I think that's by design by bond traders, because they probably don't like the, the, the transparency there. But it is just like, just like a stock. It is a security. It is traded. There is a price. But then there's a, there's a very fundamental difference in what kind of the holder of the bond is doing. In a bond, you've essentially, if, I have, if I'm holding a $1,000 bond, that means that I've lent some amount of money to the company, and it'll be in this part of it. And as long as the company doesn't go bankrupt, they'll pay me some interest and pay me my money back. When I own a stock in the company, right? I own a share of the equity as opposed to a share of the debt, which was the case with the bond. When I own a share of the equity, the company's not paying, promising to pay back anything. It's just saying, look, you are a part owner of this company, and anything that any of the owners get, you'll get. So if this company becomes worth a lot, if we start dividending out things to the shareholders, then you'll get that. If the company gets sold by someone and pays x dollars per share for it, you'll get that money. And if the company goes bankrupt, you'll also go bankrupt. And that actually leads to an interesting question. If the company goes bankrupt, and let's say, actually, let's 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 do the example right now. Let's say the company goes bankrupt, right? And I'll do a more a more in, a more in-depth example of this. The question is, let's say the company goes bankrupt and it, and people decide that it's not operational anymore, that it just can't do business because there's actually two types of bankruptcy. There's one where you say, "Oh, the co- the business is good and it just it just can't pay off its debts, so we have to somehow restructure this side of it. And then the other type of bankruptcy is liquidation, where they say, you know what? This business doesn't even make sense to operate anymore. Let's just sell off all of the assets. So the question that I'll leave you with in this video is, what happens in a situation where you enter bankruptcy, people tend want to liquidate the assets, and let's say when you liquidate the assets, there's only $8 million of assets. So the question is, who do you think is going to eat that $2 million? Is it going to be? The debt holders or the stockholders? Who is going to lose their money first? Or you can almost say, who is more senior when it comes to actually getting their money back? And I'll leave, leave you with that uh, maybe to the next video or a future video that I'll do on bankruptcy. See you in the next video.